Warning! Major bias alert! Pan was my avatar's waifu in my first playthrough, and because of that, yeah, don't be surprised if I'm gushing about how amazing she is here. Though using her as much as I did, I pretty much know her strengths and weaknesses pretty much better than most people, so, um, why don't I get around to saying it? Firstly, look at her growth rates. Just, just look at them. Just look at them. You're probably thinking, oh, come on, that's too good to be true. You must have made some kind of mistake there. 70 skill and 75 speed. That's pretty much long coup worthy, and he's one of the best in the game at those two stats. 60 strength, that's extremely good. 100 HP, also very, very good. 50 defense, not bad, not bad at all. Wait a minute, you're saying that Pan has the skill and speed of a Swordmaster combined with the offense and defense of an armored class? That can't be right, seriously, there's no way that could possibly be real. Also look at those modifiers, great modifiers in skill and speed while not sacrificing strength and defense. She also has positive modifiers in those two stats. One of the few people who has that high of a strength modifier combined with that high of a speed modifier and her only negative modifiers are in stats she doesn't really need. Her base stats are also very decent, especially her luck base, which helps up for her relatively mediocre luck growth. So you're probably thinking, what's the catch? There has to be a catch. Seriously, she can't be this good. Well, firstly, I'll say that Pan is literally that good. As far as raw combat power goes, she is by far one of the best physical fighters in the game. That This gets even more insane as she levels up. As you can see, her growths are ridiculously good. Any other physical user would kill the growth rates like that. And with those caps, she's going to end up pretty amazing too. Pan does have one Achilles heel as far as raw stats are concerned, and that's resistance. Probably as a homage to the fact that uh, Lagoos, uh, especially the Beast Tribe characters, were weak to magic in... Um, the Tellius games, especially fire magic, Pan has very, very low resistance, and her resistance base is very low too, so she'll be taking quite high damage from magic, so keep her away from that. She doesn't really like magic users at all. I mean, she'll rip them to pieces if she can get into combat with them, but you might want to avoid that because she will take a lot of damage in return. She is best fighting against physical opponents. Basically, think of her as a sword master with insane strength and durability at the same time, and... Well, again, it sounds too good to be true, and it sort of is. But there is one major thing that makes up for all of this. Pan has one severe weakness, and that's pretty much brought on by her class. Later on in the game, it won't be much of an issue. Early on, it kind of is. While Pan is ridiculously amazing, you don't want to overuse her too much early on, because her weapon is limited, and unlike many other characters, she becomes outright useless if her weapon runs out. As you can see though by those stats, her weapon is not only her form of attack, it also boosts all of her stats by a certain amount. Mostly skill, speed and luck, but a bit of strength as well. Only plus one to defense is somewhat annoying. But that plus five speed means that she is guaranteed to double anything that has equal to or lower than her actual speed stat. And considering her speed growth, yeah. Pan's stats in general are so good that she can pretty much hold her own without a pair-up partner, and she's one of the few characters in the game who can actually do that at this point. But again, there are some stipulations, and for that I'll have to explain her class in more detail. In her base class, Pan is a Targwell, one of two shape-shifting classes in this game. Of the two, it leans more towards skill and speed than, than offense and defense, but its offense is still pretty good, and its defense is no slouch either. The main thing about transformation classes is they work the exact same way Manic Heat did in every game, basically Fire Emblem 6, 8, and 11 and 12 style Manic Heats. Basically, they equip a stone as if they would equip a weapon. Every time they participate in combat, consumes one use of the stone. When the stone runs out, they cannot transform at all. And thus, they are completely useless. They literally can't fight at all. 
Now, in earlier games in the series, this was a very bad thing, and it made mana keeps kind of weak overall, because, yeah, they were very powerful and had great growth rates, but you could only use them a certain number of times, and that was completely finite. There were a finite number of dragon stones in the game. Once you ran out of those, your mana keep characters were useless, and all the effort you spent leveling them up, completely pointless and wasted. That is not the case in Awakening. In Awakening, finally, you can buy transformation items from regular shops. However, those shops won't be unlocked until much later into the game. So at the moment, for now, you might need to be careful how you use her. The only other beast stone that we'll be getting before we'll be able to buy them comes in Chapter 10. That's quite a while off, considering there are two side quests as well in between now and then, so her beast stone is going to have to last her for basically six whole chapters, including this one, so basically seven chapters. So definitely don't overuse her, or you will regret it, because she'll end up useless until you get that second beast stone. Once you get to the point where you can actually buy them, feel free to abuse her as much as possible. Seriously, when you get to that point, Feel free, she is amazing at that point in the game, and you don't want to basically skim on using her at all, because she's just downright ridiculous. But before then, you need to be a little bit careful, because if you run out of the Beast Stone, then she's kind of, well, I've already said it, basically useless. Now, the transformation classes are considered special classes in this game. So they can't promote, but, well, they don't really need to, but they can reach a maximum level of 30 instead of 20. Because of that, the rate that they learn skills is different. They start off with the Even Rhythm skill, which gives plus 10 to hit rate and evasion during even numbered turns. This is somewhat of a weird skill. It's impossible to have both it and odd rhythm at the same time, so don't try. But it's somewhat decent, and plus 10 evasion is definitely useful. I mean, plus 10 hit rate is not so much because they'll always hit anyway, but plus 10 evasion is always good, especially with how dodgy Pan is normally. It's the second skill from this class, though, that's really amazing. Beastbane. This is learned at level 15 as a Targwell, and this skill is just downright insane. It makes all of your attacks do effective damage, like think bows against Pegasus Knights, against beast-type enemies. Now, that sounds a little vague, but that covers a lot of classes in this game. Basically, here's what Beast means. Beast means horses, pegasi, griffins, and other Targwell, but that's not going to come into play unless you're doing street pass matches against other players, because, well, I mean, Pan is kind of the last Targwell, so there won't be any enemy Targwell to use that on. But even then, that's an enormous number of classes. Pretty much anything mounted that's not a Wyvern, Pan will suddenly be dealing effectiveness damage towards. Now, at the moment, there aren't very many of those enemies in the game. This skill really comes into its own in the second act of the game, which starts with Chapter 12. At that point, to avoid spoiling anything, we'll be fighting an army that uses a lot of cavalry and a lot of Pegasus Knights. This means that Pan enjoys an effectiveness bonus against pretty much everything the enemy throws at her, and it is just as insane as it sounds. This is an amazingly good skill, but it has one major flaw. That is, this skill only works when you're a Targwell. If Pan reclasses to any of her other class options, she will no longer deal effective damage towards beast-type enemies. In fact, you might as well unequip the skill when she's in another class, because it does nothing. Honestly though, this skill would be totally broken if it was usable by other classes, so I can see why they did this, but... It's a very, very good skill, and no reason not to equip it when you're a Targwell. I mean... Seriously, you won't realise now, but once we start fighting more cavalry, you'll see just how insane Beastbane can be. But, unlike, um, other classes that transformed in previous games, mainly Manakeets, here's the other reason why they're a lot better in Awakening. If, say, the Unthinkable happens and Pan runs out of Beast Stones before you get to the chapter where you find another one, she can always reclass to another class that uses different weapons entirely, and she won't be completely useless. This is, again, something else that is a first for transforming classes in the series, and greatly helps them out. Pan's other two options are Thief and Wyvern Rider, so let's cover those. Firstly, Thief. Now, 
One thing that's kind of interesting to mention is that Pawn has unique animations as a thief. She has a unique backhanded grip on her sword, which is actually kind of interesting. Or either that or she's the only one who doesn't use a backhanded grip. Kind of weird that, but I'll just say unique animations basically. Now, as a thief, she'll learn the Lock Touch and Movement Plus One skills. Lock Touch is always useful, and it pretty much means that you don't always need a thief in your party at all times. As long as you learn the Lock Touch in another class, Pan will be able to reclass back to Targwell and still be able to pick locks. Yes, the idea of a giant lock-picking bunny rabbit is kind of ridiculous, but it's very, very useful, no doubt. As is Movement Plus One, which kind of needs no real explanation. But Pan can also combine Movement Plus One with, Deliver with Deliverer from the Griffin Knight class, which will add up to a total of plus two movement when she's paired up, so that's a that's pretty useful to have. The primary options from Thief are Assassin and Trickster. Now, as Assassin, Pan will, well, firstly, Assassin is an amazing class in this game in general, and Pan will have enormous strength and defense in this class, in addition to very good skill and speed. Pan makes one of the best Assassins in the game by far, but, well, with her growth rate, she'll be useful as pretty much anything. Lethality's chance of a one-hit kill is always good to have, especially with how high um, Tarkwell's skill can go. And pass? Well, it means no one is safe from the wrath of the bunny. Then there's Trickster. Like a lot of people who've had this option I've covered so far, Trickster's not so useful as a class in itself for Pan due to her bad magic and minus one to her magic cap, so she won't be able to use staves very effectively. But the skills learned from it are very, very good. Lucky 7, again, is pretty decent, and, and it'll stack with odd rhythm on, um, or is that? Yeah, it'll stack with even rhythm, I get them confused a lot, on even numbered turns, giving you pretty much a massive plus 30s accuracy and evasion on those turns, up to the 7th one. And Acrobat combos really well with all the plus to movement skills and pass, meaning that Pan will be able to cover pretty much any terrain you want. Now, Pan's Wyvern Rider class tree is very, very important to her. Extremely important for a number of reasons that I'll be explaining after I talk about the class itself. As a Wyvern Rider, Pan will have great strength and defense. It's also a good way to patch up her defense, since that's probably one of her weakest physical stats. That's not saying much, since it's still actually really, really high, but, I mean, Wyvern Rider will give her some pretty good defense, too. Tantivity is kinda... I'm not really that big a fan of it on Pan. However, the skills learned from its promoted versions are very, very useful. Well, not exactly, um... Quick Burn, which, um, I still don't like that skill very much. I mean, it will stack with Lucky 7 and, um, Even Rhythm, so I guess you could do that, but, I mean... I mean, it's alright if you want a lot of evasion, but she's got better skills to equip, really. Swordbreaker is decent enough for even more evasion, but the real skill that you really want her to learn is Lancebreaker from the Griffin Rider class. The reason for this? Well, the Beast Killer, a weapon that's effective against Beast-type units, which includes Targwell, kinda happens to be a Lance. So plus 50 evasion against a weapon that'll deal massive damage to her is a huge boon. And the reason why this is so useful Here's something kind of interesting about Pan. She can reclass into classes that aren't Targwell. You're probably thinking, oh hey, I can just do that and I'll avoid effective damage from Beast Killers. Actually, no. Beast and Dragon Killing weapons essentially take into account the target's race, not class. No matter what class Pan is in, she will always take effective damage from Beast Killers. Because of this, this skill is invaluable to her and it's extremely vital that you get her to learn it. Trust me, enemies in the second act of the game know just how good Pan is against them and will arm themselves with beast killers. Having the extra evasion against them is very helpful, and it's also helpful for her child. Now here's where things get a bit strange. Um, basically, Pan's child is a Targwell just like them. Slight spoilers, but it was kind of obvious. But Pan's child has something very strange about them. Despite Wyvern Rider not being a gender-exclusive class, the game treats it as if it was one for the purposes of Pan's inheritance, and Pan's child swaps it out for Barbarian, despite the fact that males can inherit Wyvern Rider just fine. Any other character in the game will pass down Wyvern Rider to male children. It's not a gender-exclusive class, as we'll certainly see later on in the game. 
But for some very weird reason, Pan's inheritance treats it as if it was. Now, I really don't know why this is the case. I'd like to think that this was a case of bad programming. Either that or Pan originally did have a gender exclusive class like Pegasus Knight, and they decided to swap it for Wyvern Rider but forgot to swap out the inheritance programming that swapped it out for her son. There's another weird theory that's gone around among fans of this game though, and that's that Pan was originally meant to be a second generation character, and her son was originally meant to be her father. Perhaps they changed it because they didn't want um, any male characters in the first generation to have children associated with them, but some people think that it's possible because getting Barbarian swap for Wyvern Rider would make a lot more sense than Wyvern Rider swap for Barbarian. It's only speculation at this point, but um, it's kind of interesting. Personally, I think it was a case of uh, either just weird programming or Pan originally had Pegasus Knight and they just changed it but forgot to change the inheritance coding. Basically though, what this all means is that the only way... Okay, unless... Pan's husband has the Wyvern Rider class tree. The only way for her son to have access to this class, I mean to the skills from this class, is for Pan to pass them down. Which means that all skills from the Wyvern Rider class tree are effectively considered gender exclusive skills for the purposes of her inheritance. Again, unless her husband has Wyvern Rider as an option. If you're planning on pairing her with someone who does, ignore this part of the video. But if you aren't, out of these skills, it's pretty much a no-brainer. Definitely pass down Lancebreaker, it's really the only choice. Because being a Targwell, Pan's son will always take effective damage from Beast Killers, and so having Lancebreaker is going to really, really help that. So, basically, long story short, if you're not pairing Pan with someone who has the Wyvern Rider class option, make sure you have her learn Lancebreaker, and make sure you have her pass that skill down because that's the only way her son will be able to get the skill. As far as voice actor trivia is concerned, there's actually not much to say about Pan, since her voice actress hasn't had all that many roles in video games. It's uh, Jessica Gee, or Jessica G, I'm, I'm not really sure how to pronounce her surname, but she's done a few minor roles in some anime and some movies, but most of her game roles have just been additional voices. Really the only major game role I could find of hers was as, please forgive me for butchering the pronunciation, Zhu Rong. I'm, again, I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce Chinese names, so, um, that's pro that probably sounded horrible, but anyway, uh, a character in Dynasty Warriors. That's really the only major role of hers I could find, but I will say she does do a very good job as Pan. I really like Pan's voice, and I think it's very appropriate for her character.